Welcome to a special episode of Mock the Mock, where I take a look at someone else's mock draft. And I'm mocking giving you my views, thoughts, and opinions. And we're looking at a two-rounder today, and we're looking at Walter Football. That's right, man. He's always got, I will say, the most fun mock drafts uh, around. And sometimes you'll find a little nugget. Like, he was exceptionally high on Aiden Hutchinson going into the season when a lot of people had him as, like, a top 50 or a, a top 30 prospect. He was, like, yo, top 10, top 5. So, eh. It's always fun to look at, but what's crack a lack in your boy Barushmo? Just in case you do not know, so go ahead, become a row, subscribe, leave this video a thumbs up. If you enjoy the content, as always, let me know what you think in the comment section below. We'll be doing a watch along for college football tomorrow, so be sure you're there for that. And let's go ahead and dive into this sucker since it's two rounds. Let's uh, get to rolling. Uh, and this is actually by Charlie Campbell from Walter Football. So let's see what we got going on. Houston, uh, what's the draft order? I don't know where he's pulling the draft order, so. Uh. But he's got the Houston Texans going. Bryce Young, no qualms about this one. Like, eh, think about it. Like, if you're the Houston Texans, you're picking first overall, you're going quarterback. Things with Davis Mills probably went south. All right, on to number two. The Chicago Bears go Will Anderson. Okay. So they, oh, man, I don't know, man. I, I get it. I get it. Because after this, like, outside of quarterback and... There really hasn't been an offensive player to emerge, uh, like a, a receiver or even tackle. I think there might be a case for some, a couple of guys that might end up there at the end of the year. But going with the best player available, if you think that's Jalen Carter or if you think it's Will Anderson, then go for it. Especially if you have the Matt Eberflus-minded Chicago Bears. I can see this happening. All right. Next on the radar, we got... All these ads. Uh, New York Jets, Jalen Carter. I'm sure that Robert Sala would love this pick. I could definitely see him making it. Uh, just add in more. Like, he loves he loves depth on the defensive line. That is just a solid pick. For some people, Carter is the number three prospect in this class. All right. Next, we have Seattle Seahawks going CJ Stroud from an arm talent perspective and just an have an ideal size for the quarterback spot cj stroud is going to probably be a top 10 top 5 prospect if you see how seahawks you want to get in on that you don't have the answer at the quarterback position so so far uh, honestly so good i like it uh the atlanta falcons now they take will levis for me this isn't the will levis spot he's probably like outside the top 20 for me um and if he doesn't clean up his decision making he's gonna be just may maybe a top 50 top 75 guy really depends how the rest of the season goes but uh, i can see why people like will levis like the dude's a plus athlete um place in a very nfl like uh an nfl like scheme with like nfl passing concepts and such um and he's got honestly got a good arm so yeah just the decision making practicing going through his reads you just expect him at his age to be a bit further along than he is all right and then we have the jacksonville jaguars going brian braza uh, brian brazi uh he dude he's been tearing it up uh he missed last week because of unfortunate stuff that happened um within his family uh but don't know when he'll be back i imagine pretty soon but man this cat's been really really good D to be fair this interior class has been really good thus far to start the season guys like gervin dexter and uh jaquillin roy uh, so the Jaguars go in that spot. Uh, like for me, this is a spot where maybe you could take a swing and a tackle or even just the best player on the board. So if they think that's Brazi, then go for it. All right. Who else are we looking for? And then the New York Giants, we got four quarterbacks inside the top seven. Anthony Richardson. From a tools perspective, uh, yeah, dude, Richardson's got it all. He's got the arm. He is one of the best running quarterbacks we have seen in recent memory or at least dating back to like lamar jackson uh i guess you can make a case from leek willis but again a guy that uh did go in the first round really talking about first rounders in this uh in this regard but um they just need to put it together doesn't really like to operate inside a structure um been very turnover prone uh so 
hasn't even thrown a touchdown this season. Three rushing touchdowns before interceptions. So, like, a lot he needs to put together before I feel good about him inside the top ten. All right. On to number eight, we have the Miami Dolphins going B. John Robinson. So, this is where San Fran would land? Okay. Uh, so straight up Bijan Robinson, I wouldn't take Bijan in the top 10 and I love Bijan, but you gotta understand running back value. If you're not going to use them more than that, then uh, don't take them at the top 15 is what I say. Maybe even not the top 20, uh, depending on again, how, how do you, do you view them just a run back or someone you can play, uh, around like in the defense, whether it's outside or in the, in, uh, in the slot, a guy you can move around, uh, the Dolphins get by. Like Mike McDaniel's been known as a guy that gets by with day three running backs or journeymen, free agents at, at running back. Um, we've seen like the Niners take a couple of shots like on day two on running backs, but th those did never really even yielded much fruits. So like I don't expect Mike McDaniel to do that. So yeah, I don't know. Ah. All right, we got Quentin Johnston going to the Vikings. I kind of like this. I think he he'd be a good um be a good addition to the, like the uh, Osborne and Jefferson wide receiver group. Where then you have Adam Thielen. He's aging and whatnot. Uh, and Johnston's a different cup of tea than Jefferson. So I like that. I like that quite a bit. At number 10, we have Antonio Johnson going to the Commanders. They could use some help at safety. Uh, honestly, this is a team that could pick in a variety of different spots. Uh, it's really kind of like take the best player on the board. As you can see, some people uh, think Johnson's a guy that can play on the outside because he's got the size suit, and, and uh, I I don't mind that. I think I think he, he does have the versatile skill set as well. 10 feels a bit too high for him, uh, for me, at least right now, but... Uh, I get why a lot of people like him, and when you're a team like Washington, then really any any positions on the table. Number eleven, we have the Pittsburgh Steelers going Isaiah Foskey. I'm gonna have to read this. The Steelers could use more edge uh, edge rush talent to go with T.J. Watt. Uh, well, shoot, I mean, I I thought I thought Highsmith looked pretty all right. In the uh, in the opener, uh, I don't really recall him doing. Recall how he did last week without T.J. Watt. So let's actually go take a gander at that. Ah, oh, the dude was still disruptive. Four pressures. I mean, yeah, it wasn't like the six pressures, three sacks he had in week one, but still. Um, we're having a Foskey. He's got a high high floor or high high floor, high ceiling. Will he ever attain that potential? I think I still go with that. You got the top tackle on the board sitting there. Whoever you think it is, I'd go with that. But uh, maybe that's just me. And then we got Peter Skaronski. So here, here we go, our first offensive line prospect. Going to the Panthers in this, I guess, I'm assuming he's probably a guard at this point. Because they got um, Iguanu there, a tackle. Uh, Skoronsky, there's going to be questions about his length and such. Uh, they don't think, some people probably don't think he's a high end enough athlete to make it on the outside like a Rashawn Slater or Penny Sewell was. So Panthers are getting essentially their guard or maybe center of the future here. They also got Taylor Moton on the other side, best offensive lineman on that team. So, uh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you're Panther, there's no quarterback on the board that you feel comfortable with. Let's see what else we got going. Eli Ricks going to the Raiders. Oh my goodness, he needs to start playing. I'm here. I'm here reading. Like, I get it. A lot of people are, can be high, but to go ahead at Keely Ringo, like Eli Ricks isn't hitting the field. You're rolling a big dice, and I know this is the Raiders, but come on, man, this is this is. Uh, I'd like to believe this is a different type of Raiders team now that they have uh, Josh McDaniels in house. So, yeah, no, I I just say that guy needs to play. 
you haven't checked out my video from yesterday, it's guys that should go back to school. Again, it's real early to be saying that, but it's just... It's just really to talk about how how some prospects. It's kind of just to kind of monitor prospects as the year goes on. So like, oh yeah, didn't have the strongest start, but they really finished strong and such, or they got their foot in by the end of the stretch. But yeah, check out that video. It's a fun video. Uh, Jackson Smith and Jigba going to the Patriots. That would be nice. He kind of fits their cup of tea. A guy that's really good after the catch. Mac Jones would love that. Tennessee Titans time take Michael Mayer. Yo, offensive line is on the table. Get your the engine to your offense. Derrick Henry. Things around him ain't looking hot. Address that offensive line, for goodness sake. Like Michael Mayer's great and all, but you got like you got Broderick Jones, Paris Johnson staring you in the face. Alright, and then Keishon Obote going to the Seahawks. They took, I believe, CJ Stroud first. Uh, so maybe this is moving on from Lockett or just maybe get more receiving help in general. Uh, Boutte, another guy that hasn't had the best start of the season. Almost, a lot of people almost thought he was leaving after the opener against Florida State. So we got a ways to go until the end of the season. But, man, he, he's got to turn things around. All right, let's move on to this. Oh, my gosh, these ads these ads are killing me dude this is what the one thing i i used to love walter football back in the day but if, yep oh my gosh look at this get pure water water football with no ads for 7.99 a month dude screw that dude i'll just take the ads but i used to love it back in the day and just i just can't stand the mess of a website this is just with all the ads it's like golly you know what this looks like this looks like you, you're going into a brothel it's like ah uh, like back in like way back in the day like local hotels used to be the bro like the the pro like the brothels as well so like people that were like going just for rest and you know none of the uh the uh room service if you will like they would go there as well so it's like i it's like it's like walking into a brothel it's like, I came in here just to get rest and to read football. But he hit me in the face with all these scandalous ads. It's like, sorry, I'm a married man, ads. Get out my way. I don't have my ring on because I jammed my finger playing basketball. But it's right here. I keep it close to me. All right. Uh, enough about me. Let's roll through this. We still got a second round to go through. Miles Murphy, this is a great pick. Michael Parsons, Parsons is playing a lot more on the edge now. Uh, so maybe if you... I don't know exactly. I know they restructured Demarcus Lawrence's contract, so I don't know exactly how it looks. Maybe if that's something they want to move on from, but I love Miles Murphy. Very good prospect. Oh, Jared Patterson going to the Eagles. Finish off the interior. Nah, dude. They don't need more offensive line help, at least early. And Jared Patterson, older prospect. Oh, he looks like a man among boys. He kind of is. He kind of is. He's just... He's not... In terms of an athlete, not a high-end athlete, doesn't have great play strength. Um, for me, he's more of this like late day two, early day three guy. Dante Demas Jr. Dude, so Maryland, they're spreading the ball to everybody. So like, no one's stats are gonna be huge this year, I think, just because like th they don't have enough balls to go around. If you know what I'm saying for everyone to get in on the action but i like this a guy that's gonna play on the outside very good after the catch uh big body dude yeah i like that i do like that i think he's more day two but i i do like uh dante demas so i see him come back well after the injury here comes gervin dexter uh talk about it interior is kind of a big week well excuse me weakness for the Houston Texans, they moved on from uh, Ross Blacklock. Uh, they really have Roy Lopez and uh, not much else. I think like Malik Collins or something. So, yeah, De like Gervin Dexter has been a guy that's really improved his stock, in my opinion. And then the Arizona Cardinals go Zach Pickens. This is a guy is too inconsistent to go in the first round. High upside guy where his high end reps are very sexy, but there ain't no way he's touching the first round. Unless like he suddenly becomes consistent all of a sudden which hasn't happened thus far don't know why the like in the cardinals going on the interior it's like dude get pass rush and 
you're off get get depth at corner if you want to address the offense your offensive line probably could use uh a little touch up so yeah oh clark phillips is the third this is actually a good scheme fit for the eagles um he had an okay game against utah i didn't really i didn't really watch much of the last two games outside of highlights from utah just because they were a bunch of cupcake matchups i think it was southern utah and san diego state uh but yeah no nah, like uh he's a good scheme fit night like very good like I think a pretty darn good athlete like in terms of being a mover he's not extremely explosive and um like he's got like okay speed but like he's very intelligent he's very uh reactionary or at least proactive when it comes to uh reading and reacting to uh what he's seeing um underneath uh guy can move guy can move so i don't mind it a little early for me but i don't mind it tyree wilson tyree wilson who did texas tech face nc state this week they kind of had a new patch together offensive line um i know that he kind of like dominated the first couple of weeks for texas tech so i don't know how he did against nc state specifically but like for me a guy that uh is more of this interior player kind of struggled on the outside when faced against other nfl uh caliber competition like really struggled like liberty bowl everyone points out how dominant he was and then you watch how he played against charles cross in that game and it's like he couldn't win against charles cross if he had to face charles cross the whole game that game would not be that good for him so guy i'm just not completely sold on just yet will mcdonald had a farm e -I -E -I -O. so they get more pass rushers they did bring in um oh my gosh i can't think of his name oh he got hurt played for michigan be out this year david ojabo there we go came from mine they have him kind of lying in the weights while they still have justin houston like ah, i feel like maybe going to the secondary a little bit would be a bit of a better get uh is kylie ringo still on the board ain't no way ain't no way and i ain't about to go back to check i ain't gonna fight these ads uh if dude i really think he is not positive but uh corner is definitely probably on the table uh for the baltimore ravens and i would consider that uh here's jalen jones he actually had a pretty solid out in um versus miami he was coming back from injury i think it was the ankle uh but I I, I like I like him for all intents and purposes. I feel better about him day two, but uh, definitely a guy to keep your eye out on. Had a really strong out against Miami, I would say. Uh, plays the run exceptionally well. Honestly, kind of a Dan Campbell type of guy. Let's see. We have Cedric Tillman in the first. Dude, Tillman's been good, but like... I, I mean, this wide receiver class feels a bit open here and there uh but his skill set feels too similar to gabriel davis so probably won't go with him there i would probably consider about other other players like uh jordan addison still on the board golly that would be wild have him come out on the slot really stretch the field for you create after the catch but i mean if you're the bills like you don't really need any one position terribly so just you could go out and get the best player on the board if you want. Wow. So Keely Ringo was still on the board. Why is he at 27? This makes no sense. Last mock week, like I talked about this week, he went to the Bengals as well. Kind of wild. Um, I think he's the best cornerback in the draft right now. So like I think it's just wild people having him going to like as far back as like outside the top 20. That just blows. That's the most surprising thing to me uh hey my boy zion nelson probably not a first rounder uh right now but the guy has shown good upside he's shown that steady like he ever ever since like starting his the 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 season opener of his freshman season against florida uh and just getting annihilated that he's really really the development's just gone straight up last year it plateaued a bit so we're hoping this year you know you see uh a bit uh a bit a bit more like, okay he, he's trending back up similar to what we saw with like a charles cross 
But yeah, offensive line help for Green Bay. Yes. Uh, they desperately need depth. Uh, Nolan Smith is interesting. Just doesn't feel like the cup of tea like the Chiefs would use. I don't think he would be a good fit for the Chiefs defense. Um, but that's interesting. I'll say that. And then the Chargers go Anton Harris. They need a, a Harrison. They need a right tackle. And oh my gosh. Ugh. There we go. I swear, dude. I hate I hate this. I hate I hate this sucker. Just riddled with ads. Riddled. So uh but yeah, no, they need a right tackle, so it works out perfect here. Um, he's a guy that's honestly been impressive, uh, that really worked on his play strength this off season guy that knows where he's weakened and needs to work at, uh, a guy that looks at it from a very, uh, non-subjective bias. There's no bias with him. No subjective bias. He understands where are his weaknesses and where he can get better at. So, yeah. And then we saw this Joey Porter. Uh, honestly, I think he might be one of the hottest rising uh, players in this prospects in this class. Um, he just has that ideal length, uh, ideal athlete for the position, plays with physicality. You like that. Uh, and honestly, Buccaneers could really invest in another uh, corner with Sean Murphy Bunning and Jamil Dean being free agents. All right, on to the second round. Let's do let's speed run this sucker. Jordan Addison. Wow, probably currently playing like the best receiver in college football and doesn't go in the first round. Kind of wild. Uh, Addison's been real good, but good get for Houston. They just keep adding speed. Jeez. Uh, we got the Bears. They go with the offensive interior, which that's good help. Uh, Steve Oliva. Haven't really watched much TCU this year. So I don't know how he's faring, but I know he's just a big, strong guy. Uh, not very athletic, but I mean, that kind of works with the offense that's being implemented there. Uh, Demarion Overshone. Still think this is a bit early for him in a linebacker class. It's kind of wide open. Um, I can't remember if Trent Simpson or Noah Soar still on the board, but those are guys to consider. Uh, I mean, we're here in the second, so Henry Toa Toa is a name that should be brought up. Maybe the Iowa linebacker duo. Sika Ika, just a great fit for the Seahawks. Uh, they, they need to get better talent at nose tackle as they got a bit of uh, age and depth concerns there. Then Zach Evans going with the Falcons. Why would they go with a run back? They, they kind of have Cordero Patterson. They have uh, Algier. Like, I get it. It's a, it's a good class to need a running back in. So, not against it, but still, it's kind of like, eh. You're a team that has much more glaring needs, you know? Uh, Paris Johnson. Wow, you still list him as a guard? That's flipping insane. I don't know why you would still list this cat as a guard. But that would be a great pick. Have him play tackle for the Jags. All right, uh, Devin Witherspoon. Don't know if he'll go this high. Uh, like, dude's got a really good skill set, uh, and he's just consistent. But um, whew. maybe maybe more in the, like the third, fourth round area, teams will start to consider him. I don't know, man. I don't know. Whoa. When we, when I get to start preparing for my like uh mid-season rank uh prospect rankings or position rankings uh there's a lot to consider this cornerback class has had a lot of a lot of movers i would say giants though yeah because I, I also would say this isn't just james bradbury replacement but adoree jackson might not be in the long term plans uh, brandon joseph honestly there's been other safeties that have just outperformed him to this point brand joseph feels more like a uh like be a guy that will be picked around 75 or 100 right now at this point but grabbing a guy with a lot of with good range makes a ton of sense if you're san francisco uh habakkuk baldonado 
out of Pittsburgh. He kind of feels like Rashad Weaver out of Pittsburgh from a few years ago. He's got good length. He's just a solid, solid pass rusher um, that doesn't have like great upside, but he's also an older prospect as well. So that feels a bit early for him. Oh, crap. KJ Jefferson. I'm not on the KJ Jefferson's a quarterback uh, wagon just yet. Uh, it's kind of weird because it's like he just doesn't operate a very pro ready system there. So it's kind of hard to get a good gauge on him. Like he's never really asked to work inside a structure a ton. He's not really asked to go through reads. They just ask him to go out there and, you know, just win with your, your, your athleticism, your physical gifts. So I don't know, man. I'm just not there. Yet. Maybe it, like, maybe, maybe it'll take some more watching a KJ to get around him. Josh Proctor. I haven't really followed how he's done this year after he got hurt last year. But like I said, this is a good safety class. Like there's a lot of other guys to mention here, like Chris Smith, RJ Moden. Um, we can talk about Brian Branch and Antonio Johnson, I think is still on the board. So there's still a lot of good players. Here comes Malachi Moore. Dealt with back-to-back -back, uh, season when he was dealing with a nagging back injury. Brian Branch, I think, is just a better prospect at this point. So, uh, uh, Panthers going with the slot corner. I don't know about that one. Uh, my boy, Kenny McIntosh. Yo, if, you, if you're not new to the channel, you know I've been blowing, the, blowing the steam up this dude's butt for, for about two years now. That I'm a freaking absolute fan of kenny mcintosh i love mcintosh i love what he can do as a receiver he also brings return ability uh i don't know if you're the raiders like could you go other spots i feel like you could i feel like there's more pressing needs right offensive line cornerback depth and such i don't know and then manual forbes is actually i think a good fit he kind of he's very uh you know, he comes from that, uh, was it David? Oh, I can't think of the DC for Mississippi State, but you know, you know, Forbes is very, uh, like, you know, he, he's played every type of zone coverage under the sun. It's a very uh, zone specific scheme, but with his length uh, and physicality that he's able to play press and then also man. So it's like, uh, yeah, he feels like a patriot. I like that. Good ball skills with him too. Storm Duck to the Dolphins. Uh, Storm Duck's been awful, 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 awful. So um, yeah, no bueno. And Tennessee Titans. Jermaine Burden. I didn't include him in guys that should go back to school, but he's kind of in that tier right now just because he hasn't been able to become a focal point of the offense like I thought he would. Uh, but. Yeah, grab in a little more receipt. Honestly, if I'm the Titans, man, focus on that offensive line. Like, the, that's right now what's really hurting you is the lack of run blocking on that offensive line. It's not the lack of playmakers right now for you. And then Brian Branch, good pickup for the Seahawks. Uh, they could use more help uh, there in the secondary. Uh, Zay Flowers going to the Cowboys. It's uh, see, this is where like a CD Lamb gets moved to the outside, predominant like more often than playing in the slot. That's the only way that could work. Um, Flowers for me is more of a day three guy. Jared Verse, my boy. Hopefully he's healthy. Uh, that's my only concern. Come back and play at a high level like he's been playing the first three weeks of the season. Um, grab more pass rush. Yeah, more pass rush never hurts. You got Cam Jordan. He, how old is Cam Jordan at this point? Wow, 33, and he'll be 34 entering the uh, 2023 season. So yeah, that that ain't a bad idea. Uh, wow, Noah Soul really fell. This would be a great get for the Lions. Noah Soul is a Dan Campbell type of linebacker. That would actually be a really good fit, too, next to Malcolm Rodriguez. Uh, Tavion Wicks 
Haven't watched much Virginia. Seems like they've struggled this year, so I don't know how he's performed thus far. <coughs> oh, grabbing more receiving helps. Not a bad option. Um, you got Cooper there, Donovan Peoples Jones. That's taking a bigger part of the offense. And then after that, it's kind of like you just got guys. Um, Jameer Gibbs going to the Cardinals. Feel feel like they, they're real comf comfortable in what they got at Eno Benjamin. But this, technically, this is, I would consider this an upgrade. I think it would be tremendous in this offense. On to Rashad Torrance going to the Eagles. Yo, Rashad Torrance, he's like a for me a box safety only. Um, I well, I know a lot of people like him. I didn't come away that impressed. I felt like he was more of a fourth, fifth round type of guy. So yeah, not entirely that high on him. Jaron Hall going to the Colts. Jaron Hall is like the Bailey Zappy of this. Uh, draft class. I see him more as a fourth rounder, a guy that could be maybe a solid backup in the league. Um, limited arm, arm that does it can't that doesn't really drive the ball downfield. Um, has problems looking over the middle of the field, though he's been really good thus far this season. Uh, also, an older prospect, Jackson Kirkland has yet to play this year yet. Uh, cause I think it was an ankle injury. Do they, do they say it on here? Uh, but he was supposed to come out last draft, but, uh, ankle injury was discovered at the East West Shrine Bowl. So he decided to return and, um, I think he's still working his way back into the lineup. So uh, it's kind of, kind of hard to peg him in this draft class this high. Uh, BJ Ojalari. I think he's a very, another guy that's a fast rising prospect, dude. Like right now there's this. Like, oh, who after like guys like Miles Murphy and Will Anderson, who are going to be the edge guys that emerge as first rounders as people are like, oh, maybe Foskey, uh, maybe Nolan Smith, maybe Andre Carter. I think BJ Ojolari has been like, hey, yo, quit sleeping on me, bro. That would be a good pickup by the Rams. Uh, Nick Broecker, uh, he's done an all right job this year after ever since moving to guard, and that's going to be his position in the NFL. So this is not a bad get. See him more as like a late day two, early day three guy, but not bad. Jalen Duncan, a lot of people are pretty high on him. I think I have him as a top 100 prospect, but more in that late third round variety. But uh, yeah, if things don't work out with honestly Jonah Williams or even Leo Collins uh, being able to groom somebody uh, for the future isn't a bad idea. Pick 60, Felix Anudike Uzama. Another guy that I didn't list out, but someone that like no one's really stepped to emerge as that day three or as that uh, third edge in this class just yet. Um, he's another guy that a lot of people are going to be impressed with how powerful he is uh, and such, but I don't think he's really done all that this year thus far. Like He's been fine, but I don't think it's like first round fine. Hey, Zach Charbonnet, they get a power back. Honestly, Chiefs, they don't need to do this. Oh, why go running back? Uh, you know, Sean Tucker's on the board, by the way. Eric Gray's on the board, by the way. There's some running backs on the board, by the way. Uh, but Zach Charbonnet, if you're the Chiefs, why are you going? You don't go running back. It's not that important to your offense. Chargers go Jamie Robinson. This is a guy I'm hoping to talk about in future videos. He has been really good to start the season. Like I said, this safety class has gotten really good. Like maybe it'd be like, oh, there's no top end safeties. You get to day two and it's just littered with safeties. Really is. Jamie Robinson uh, being one to mention here. He has been really good. And they do talk and utterly mate leave for free agency. So that's kind of like, like, uh, oh, hopefully, you know. It's kind of like, uh, what, do, what do they call it? I don't know the saying, but um, just in case, just in case he does leave, we have a uh, backup option. Uh, Buccaneers go Tyler Van Dyke. Uh, honestly, at this point, like Van Dyke, he does seem like he needs a little bit more polish and development. So this would be actually a really good spot for him. And then with the final pick, right? No, that was the final pick because the Dolphins screwed up. But uh, 
That's it for the video. I'm going to get off this ad infested website. Let me know who is who are the names you were surprised weren't mentioned because I'll tell you there was a lot. But uh, that's it for the video. Go ahead to the YouTube thing. As always, until next time, you be easy, my friends. Later.